Hi, this is Mitch Mitchell of I'm Just Sharing and Mitch's blog Fame and a few others. And I'm here today with Marcy Hill, who's written a book. Say hi, Marcy. Hey, Mitch. There we go. Hi, everyone. Marcy has written a book. It is called 62. I want to make sure I get this right. 62 blog posts to overcome bloggers block. That's correct. And she actually finished it in 2012. And the reason I know that is because I actually reviewed it on my blog in 2012. And we interviewed you through our hot blog tips hangout back in 2012. And so yes. you've done a lot of improvements on this book. And we're going to get to that. But this is what I usually do. I like to start with a little background stuff. So let's talk about some background stuff first, which is you started out working in human resources. So talk a little bit I about did. that. Because uh, one of our other guests, one of our other guests, one of my other <laughs> interviews that I did was with a lady named Adrienne Graham, and that's where she started. So how would you okay, get it? I, Human resources is pretty much by default. I knew I wanted to be in business, study business in college, but I didn't know which aspect. And I started re well contact speaking to the different instructors, and I ended up in HR. But in hindsight, I am almost certain I should have been in marketing and not HR. But I didn't know enough about marketing to do things differently. Well, anyway, so that's that's my HR. I have a 12-year um, career in human resources. I've worked in benefits, training, recruitment, employee relations. I've done quite a bit in HR, and then I left it in 2008. My 12-year career plus my um, job and 12-year career in 2008 to pursue my passion of writing. And when I left, I was supposed to be a um, a magazine journalist. And at that time, there was such a that's when the industry was really, really changing when everything was moving to online, which was it was good at one point where I didn't have to. To go back and study writing, but then I also had to learn the world of online marketing. So that's uh, that's what was going on around the time I left. So that's the short and long of my HR career. But I am currently looking for a job as a trainer. I don't want all of HR, but I did like the training aspect of it. So currently, I am looking for a gig as well as working. And I'm well, it could be contract or part time. But I am also working on. Conducting my own trainings, online trainings, with my blogging and uh, writing, also. So I have a lot going on. But you also did a course at a local college, did you, on the topic of blogging, or was it social media overall? I did not do a course. I have, I did um, do, I do community um, community workshops. So I did get your voice heard through blogging blogging for authors. So I do try to go into the community at different libraries because Chicago has 70 libraries, public oh libraries, so I try to make my rounds. But I have done things in the community. But however, I'm finding a lot of people are still not understanding blogging, which is a challenge to get into places to teach it if they don't understand it. So my new goal is not that the book is done, is to go to go into high schools. To train students on, to teach students how to blog and to write through blogging. That's intriguing, and I, you're right about the blogging. I actually spoke locally in 2011, and the people who put together this big presentation, uh, I don't think they thought that blogging was anything. So they put me in this little tiny room. That 10 minutes after I started, the room was packed with people and people really? out in the hall. And they had to know, you know, like I said, they didn't understand what blogging was. I had a feeling it was going to be bigger than what they thought. And I, I was glad that I had that feeling, although it still kept me in a little room. <laughs> <laughs> but that was great to say standing room only. Oh, yeah. And, and, and because some of those people were actually standing, I, I can say I actually got a standing ovation at the end of it. So there you go. There's a couple in my lifetime. <laughs> so when you first started yeah, writing... How did you, I mean, did you start out in 2009 or 2008 with a blog, or did you start out writing for other people's blogs, or, you know, what was your genesis? The goal was to be into, was be, was to get into magazines, and one month after I left my job, and I actually left it on February 14th, that was the best Valentine's Day gift ever, because it was on a Friday, 
um, there was a local publication called Indigo. It was an urban paper, and I submitted my resume, and I actually got a story within, I'll just say a week, because I had already been writing, but I had not been in publications. You know, it would be great to see my name in, um, well, back then, um, Essence. I, I'm still shooting from Crane, Chicago, because I can be online or or, or in print with them. Uh, I don't care. I just want one article, Crane, Chicago, Marcy Hill, and I get paid for it, because I didn't, I didn't get paid for that Forbes piece last year. Man. But the goal is to get into... Um, get into publications and that story was actually the cover story the next month because I was just writing so that was a blessing and before that I, I still work with the independent bulletin newspaper so it's not like I didn't have any clips at all and I did have an article in at that t I can't think of the name of the magazine but the article was good it was called desperate women not just on TV so that was one of my first that paid magazine articles so, um, yeah, that was the, the genesis of my career, being published in Indigo. And at that time, there were two conferences that came to Chicago. One was the Unity Conference, which had all minority journalists. And then there was another conference with the Community Media Workshop, and everybody was touting blogging. And it was easy to get into, for me to get into it because I love technology and I love writing. So that was just a home. But at that time, I didn't really have a topic. I was just throwing stuff out there and hoping people would read it. Mm -hmm. Well, I am more focused now. What, five years? Six? No, seven years later, finally got focused. Now it's time to get paid more for blogging. Boy, wouldn't that be nice? I, had, I mean, this month on the 22nd, from my business blog, it would be 10 years. Oh, God bless you. <laughs> yeah, and I will sit here and tell you that out of all those years, putting out all those blog posts, for all of my blogs. I just started number five last night. I, and part of me wants to slap myself, but part of me understands why I did it. Uh, but I have not necessarily figured out the marketing part. As a matter of fact, here's an interesting question to ask you. When you saw your article being on the magazine early on, did you kind of think, hey, I've actually made it? Or do you recognize, you know what, in this industry, this is kind of a one-off it didn't really give you the kind of publicity and boost that you thought it might. Because You know what, I really didn't know at that time because I was new. Everything was new to me. I had read a book, I kept writing, so I can't say that I thought it was the, the, um, the starting point to a career. However, this is hard because one, you know, even getting into Crane Chicago, I have the editor's attention but now I need a very good story, and I want something that's different. I see what they write about, and that it's not, it's everything is business, but it's not business on my side of town, which they probably wouldn't be interested in either because the businesses, up, you know, up north and, and downtown make much more money than the businesses on my side of town. So I can't say that they wouldn't be interested, but I'm trying to find that big story that's different. Hmm. Well, of course, what's yeah. different is that side of town doesn't make the kind of money. <laughs> huh? I said, well, what's different is that side of town doesn't make the kind of money. And no, not just point. that, but the topic. I'm looking for a topic that I, I have an idea, and I don't want to say it right now because I still have things to, um, some research to do because I really don't know how to find the information, but I do know that it'll be different, and it's about the money that the topics that Crane will be interested in. So that's um, one of the, the topics. And even when I wrote the article for Forbes, I, I have, honestly, I probably pitched at least, I had been pitching Forbes, but not consistently, and that was my problem. I wasn't consistent because when you, you get kicked in the gut, you just, you just say, you know what, I'm done, but I can't afford to be done. This is why I left my job. So even with that Forbes article, I probably submitted at least 10 stories to Forbes before I got the name of the editor. And then even when I got her name, well, the particular editor I reached out to, and even after I got her name, I probably pitched three or four things and she said, nope, nope. And then that last one, because, and I don't know if it's because I had the ebook that was already published, that she said, okay, we got it. 
But then I also saw they had not had any stories that were written about bios. So that was probably my end with that one. They had resume stories, but they didn't have professional bio stories. So I don't know if it was the book or the, the topic that got me in, but I'm glad that it was published. And it was a good article, too. Well, that's interesting about the pitching. I mean, I, I'll tell you the truth. I mean, I, I kind of think, I think I wrote an article rather than did a video on it. But my topic for this year is courage. And, you know, it takes a lot of courage to kind of pitch yourself out there and do a lot of marketing. Um, I mean, we have social media, and it's somewhat easy putting things out on Twitter or on Google Plus or whatever. But actually having to pitch yourself to someone else even if you know what you have is good, but trying to get their mindset, you're right. That does kind of beat you down. So how do you find the inspiration to say, no, nah, you know what, I ain't done with this. I'm going to keep on going. One, I look at, um, first of all, the main thing that keeps me going is the fact that even though I'm looking for a job, that's not my destiny. My, my writing, I know I'm a gifted writer. I know that there are a lot of writers better than me. However, the one thing that will put me on top of other writers is the fact that I keep going. So that's one of the things that keeps me going is that if you keep going, eventually somebody will take notice. Something will happen because no energy is ever wasted. It may not look the way you expect it to look, but something will happen. And normally it's greater than what you expect. So that's one of the things that keeps me going. And then another thing is, I know I'm good, but it took me at least five years for me to say to Marcy, you know what, you are better than you know you are, than you think you are. Because, and then I take write down everything that I've done, and that's why I keep my page on my, my Hire Me page. Every time I, I publish something, I put it out there because if I don't promote myself, nobody else will. No matter how many evangelists you have on social media, no matter how much your mother loves you and she tells people what you do and all of your friends, nobody you are your best marketer, your best salesperson. And if you're not enthusiastic about what you do, if you're not convinced about what you can offer other people, it doesn't matter. And even if you don't if, even if you only have one clip behind your name that you make that make sure that clip was pretend like it was the New York's bestseller and you just pitch the hell out of that one clip. If that's all you have, but you ultimately is your your confidence in yourself and your skills and what you can offer people. Even if you can't sell, I'm still trying to figure out how to sell my book to people. But doggone it, I have a book. That's the one thing that put me you know above other people. Even if they don't know about a blog, or, well here here's a book that will help you read it and then let's talk. You know what I mean? So it's it's the confidence, but most people don't have it, and then. Even it's hard to come. It's hard to promote yourself. It's hard to talk about yourself, especially women, when when you've done a lot, because the society say, well, you have to be good, but then you still have to find that humbling level, where you're not, where you're promoting what you do, but not being egotistical about it. And then when you are in a certain place, because I'm different. Well, I'm people are different, but I'm more different than my friends and my peers. So I'm trying to figure, find a happy balance where I'm still you, but I've just done more because I felt that I had to. And what I've done doesn't change who I am. So I, I'm still working on that because everybody's not there. But on the same token, I have to stop hiding behind other people's insecurities. So that's what I'm working on now. And I know that's probably, did I answer your question? Because I know I went somewhere else with that. You more than answered the question. As a matter of fact, you know what? I hope a lot of folks watch this video just for that last two minutes. That's beautiful stuff. That's great motivational stuff. And because you're right, you know, we do get beaten down. And sometimes we are the only ones who can say, hey, you know what? I know I've got some value. I mean, goodness. Um, some folks know I'm a healthcare finance consultant. I helped the hospital make $730 million more in one year than they had ever made before. And you would think that that would just be out there, that everyone who saw that would say, oh my God, we got to get this guy in there. But it doesn't work that way. Right. You actually have to you know, get out there and pitch it and not make it sound like uh, the, 
you're just the best thing in the world and you think everyone else is terrible. You, you do hope you're the best thing in the world and you're putting it out there, but, you know, there has to be that balance somewhere. And sometimes we overbalance it by not even keeping it out there in front of everybody. And that doesn't help us get anywhere. And I have a friend who who said she was, um, she said, well, I went to your website and she said, you've done more things, a lot of things that I didn't even know about. You know, I always promote my guest blog posts, but I don't really promote everything that I do, but I do let people know what I want to do in hopes of, you know, they'll read my stuff and say, hey, she's good, but I still have to promote Marcy. And people are buying Marcy. They're not buying blogging. They don't care about blogging. But if I'm, as I stated earlier, if I'm not confident about and enthusiastic about what I do, who cares? Not really. And then you can actually, and which is a challenge with the with the job search, if you are, if you can get a chance to talk to people, as opposed to going through those machines, you can. I, you, more people will probably have jobs. You know, I mean, I think so. If they could get those two minutes to talk to a person, to say, hey, even though this is what my resume say. Says, but it's what I really offer because you can't put everything on one page, even two pages. And the people's energy, you're not going to feel that through a resume. So I just really feel that's the confidence is, is important, but you're not going to get that unless you have conversations. So a typical day, okay, there's no such thing as typical days, I know, but you know, humor me on this one. You have writing, and you have communications, and of course you have regular life stuff. So let's just talk about writing communications. What kind of percentage balance do you have between the two, the writing and the communicating? And when you look at the communicating, is it mainly by phone, by email, or through social media? Okay, so my day has changed a little bit because I was working, and now I'm trying to get back into this um, groove of my stuff. But last week, the I think Monday, well, I don't even know, Mitch, because I'm trying to get back. But most of my time is spent now reaching out to people via um, LinkedIn and email to let them know about my book. And these are, and it's easy. I'm starting with the people that I know personally to make it easier and build my confidence to reach out to the people that I don't know because I do have connections on LinkedIn that I don't know personally. However, that's about to change with my book. So now as I'm reaching out to people that I know personally, I'm sending little messages to people that I don't know personally, say, hey, let's talk. And if they never get back to me, that's okay. They, the next message they're going to get from me is, hey, my book is available for purchase. You know what I mean? Because everybody really don't hang out on LinkedIn. But that's By the my way, main you and I aren't connected on LinkedIn. We are not, but we but we're on Facebook and Twitter, so Facebook, we, Twitter, I mean, Facebook and Facebook. But we need to be connected on LinkedIn. I'm just saying. I'm going to do that as soon as I'm done here. <laughs> and you want and you're one of the few people, honestly, that I have connected with on all of my sites. I think I know you're you're one of my social media buddies. And so is Eileen. I think we're connected on all three. What? You're not connected on all of them, Vanessa? <laughs> no. You know what? I have Vanessa on. Actually, you know what? I don't even think we're connected. We're connected on Twitter, but I talk, actually talk to Vanessa. So, yeah. But as far as being yeah. on the social sites, not really. I don't think she's on Facebook. I've not seen her on LinkedIn as far as I know. I think she's got a profile on Google+. She did send me an email, and she has been such a huge supporter. And I would like give a shout out to Miss Vanessa for being such, because she was actually one of the people. She was my accountability partner for my book. Ah. So I really want to thank um, thank her for helping me, because I told her if you don't hear from me, do a check in to make sure I'm on point, at least working on something. Just and she was the logo here in the top. This is my hand right there. I'm pointing to the top right. I hope it's the right for everyone else. She actually created that picture for me because my cover of my book is just, you know, it, that's my book. I paid for that, though, a lot of money in 2004 to have these printed up. And she created this cover so that I would have something to look a little more visually pleasing 
online. So a, a lot of shout out to Vanessa. She's a doll. And if you don't know Vanessa, I, I can't think of her Twitter handle right now, but let me know. Coach Follow Bob me on Marcy. Like, yes. I think she's yeah. Coach Bob Notes. Yeah, follow her on um, Twitter. She's such a beautiful person. Yeah, and see, now we got to make sure she watches this video so she can gush at how, how nicely we talked about her. <laughs> right, and it's going to be on um, on, on um, YouTube too, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. as a matter of fact, oh, it's yeah, already yeah, going yeah. live on YouTube. Oh, okay, cool. So there you go. Okay, so your first foray into blogging. Talk about that. Someone took from Black, uh, I met somebody from Black Enterprise at the Unity Conference, and I told them that I was entering into my writing career, and they said, well, you should start a blog. Now, I'm almost certain that the person who told me this probably was not blogging, <laughs> but I did it. I, do, I, I tend to do stuff people tell me to do when it makes sense. Even if I don't know what I'm doing, if it makes sense, I'll try it. Um, I started because I had a community site. You know, I had a... I had a newsletter called Shorty in the House, <laughs> and then I transferred Shorty in the House to a blog, and it, it was, I would probably post once every other week whenever something happened, something ticked me off, but that was my end to blogging. I said, okay, this is cool, and I started another blog at that time called As Not Seen on TV, and the goal of that blog was to talk about women try to break down media stereotypes and if time had permitted and if I were getting paid. You know how you hear the news stories? They always tell you bits and pieces. Well, and Chicago is huge on crime and violence, especially the south side of Chicago, which is where I live. I was actually going to try to dispel all of that by doing stories, like actually reaching out to the families, telling the stories that are not told. You know, the, the what do they call it? The con sharing more context of the story that you will hear on the news because you think everybody in the South, if you watch the news, and I get people on Twitter asking me, oh, are you safe? <laughs> you know, because of the news, Chicago news. And I tell them, dude, most people on the South Side are working people. We don't all kill each other. But the news never tell people that a lot of this violence that you that you're, that's being reported is because they shut down the how the um, public housing and they didn't have a, a viable plan to displace people. Now you have gangs, six gangs in one block. You know they're fighting for territory, which is why you hear more violence now than you did in the past ten years because of that. But the news will never tell you that 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 was a botched up plan by the mayor and they just put people in different communities without doing due diligence. But of course the mayor didn't care because he lived in his gated community. And he doesn't have to deal with that. He just has to deal with it from the public relations aspect of it, not, oh, the community residential living aspect of it. So getting back to the original point, going back to as one of the reasons why I started as not on, as not Seen on TV, that was one of the stories I was going to tell, as well as dispel stereotypes that you hear about women, and especially black people. But I only kept that for a minute because it was sucking up a lot of time and not bringing any money. And I think now I have three blog, four, three blogs that I, I manage. One is Go Shorty. That's still my. I still have Shorty, but it's a community site now, and I share resources on the south side of Chicago. But I have a plan to put Shorty on steroids, which is why I need that job so I can change it and do it what I do what I needed to do. Then I have a site, Marcy Wright. That's my portfolio site, but I want to share resources that I find, resources and lessons that I experience to make it easier for other bloggers and writers. And then I have Real Skate Stories. I'm doing uh, research on Chicago. I'm doing research on Chicago's roller skating history and black roller skating in Chicago. And that's my site, but I really don't promote that one because it's not exactly the way I want it to be, which is another reason why I need that job so I can. Because <laughs> yeah. that site will actually blow up with the way I want, you know, once I get it the way I need it to. And it won't just be, even though my focus is Chicago's roller skating history, I'm collecting all roller skating stories because there is opportunity out there. Because for any boomer who used to roller skate, that, that, was, that, was, their, that was their activity, that was their life. So it will mostly serve as a memory book. I say it will serve as a memory book for some. 
and a history book for others. See now, because if you talk to any, any it, boomer, they're like, "Oh my God, yeah, I used to roast skate. I wasn't good." And I mean, if I could just record the the conversations, like the faces, that priceless. The stories are nice, but the expressions on their faces when they share their stories, man. I love it. I said, I'm just going to say, look, we're going to have to record this because your face, I, I need that face. I need that expression. Well, you mentioned boomers and skating, and yeah, I did a little bit of that. Uh, and I, I never could look as cool as I thought I was going to look. <laughs> I, was, I was good when they left me alone, but when it was time to stop or when I got undercut by people who were going way too fast, there's just nothing you can do. So I just want to touch on a couple of things real quick, and then we move on from it. One, I just talked about the roller skating. Two, that's the problem with gentrification because New York City has the exact same problem, where they have taken big parts of Harlem and turned it into these condominiums that none of those people can afford to live in, and suddenly they're starting to squeeze all these people up into the 130s and 140 uh, street areas, and it's just way too many people and no new housing or whatever, and they're going to start having situations like you have in Chicago. And I knew about the gentrification going back to 2000 in the Chicago area, so I already knew about that. But getting back to blogging, I know about Marcy Wrights because I actually highlighted you on one of my Black Web Fridays back in 2012. And then I wrote a guest post for you. I'm not sure if you remember that, but I wrote a guest post for I your do. blog. I do. It's on my site. Yes, it is. And I make sure every once in a while to go ahead and, and promote that bad boy because, you know, I go looking for stuff that I did. And I said, eh, let's keep putting this out there let people know I've been around for a lot longer than they think. <laughs> so I so like Mitch, that. So, how did you get into blogging? Say what? How long, how, I mean, how did you get into blogging since this is your 10th anniversary? My 10th anniversary. Actually, uh, I got into blogging because I used to subscribe to a newsletter by a guy named Chris Perillo. He was a, he was okay. a kid at that time, uh, you know. But I wanted to learn something about the new stuff online, and so I subscribed to it. And it was his site that talked about business blogging, how having a, a blog on your business could help you to promote your business because it shows people your competence and that you know what you're talking about. And that's really why I started it. Um, and then it just got into the one of those things where I'd always been writing all kind of stuff anyway, so I wanted to write more, and that's where uh, some other stuff came up. You know, I'm just sharing. Basically, came up because back in '98 or something, I was on a site that was called My Dear Diary, <laughs> where you could chronicle your day. It was just your own internal diary. You could share it with other people if you wanted to, or you could just keep it to yourself, and it was just cathartic. I, I could write on that site. And then uh, that site went away, and I went to another site, and I was writing the same type of stuff. And then that site crashed, and they went to a new server, and it wasn't the same. And I said, you know, I want a place where I can pretty much write whatever I want to write, and I created my own on just sharing. But I still didn't use that to write whatever I wanted to write about uh, because I didn't want it to be a diary. I wanted it to be something more. And I think it's turned out to be a lot more. Um, Maybe not enough so that I continue doing all the other stuff that I, I ended up doing later on with other blogs, but I think it's found its own thing. But the business blog was really purely for business reasons. As a matter of fact, that's the blog of mine that you highlight in your book, which we're now going to get to, which is the 62 uh, blog post to overcome bloggers block. Um, I'm on page 37, or actually the 39th page in the book. There you go. <laughs> so, what was the thought behind starting to write that book? Remember I told you people tell, I'll do things people tell me to do if it makes sense? Well, um, there's a, a gentleman, Dante Hamilton. I met, he's the facilitate, facilitator of the he, well, he has millions of meetups, but I met him through the WordPress meetup. And in 2012, he said, you know what, you need to write a book. And you need to write a book to highlight your expertise because at one time I was live blogging. And I actually have a live blogging book. Yeah. And I actually have a, a better one, and I need to get it out. But he said, you need something to highlight your expertise. And I was thinking, there are a lot of books about blogging, which 
I wasn't concerned about that. My concern was what could I do that encompassed the two things that I loved most, which were writing and blogging. So it made sense to go on the content side and then on pro and there was a young lady who did a blog post. She had 50 types of blog posts in this article. And um, I said, you know what? This is all about content. I could go in, I could go in and create all of these types of blog posts, or I could find other people who created it and then create this book. So I started doing research on content and I found three articles that I pulled together, but she that one article on Pro Blogger, they had 50 types. I said, okay, cool. This is this is it right here. And then I found another article that shows the pros and other considerations. I think you put pros and cons of each post. And Vanessa said, I wouldn't necessarily use cons, use other considerations. Or something more positive because it really wasn't a con. So now you have the type of blog post, pros and other considerations, and then you have the visual samples. Because I was actually going to um, try to create each type of blog post. Which I could have done and could have done it well, but then it would make more sense to reach out to other people who have already done it, which is what I did. I had to do a little blogger stalking. Most people said yes, and there were only Mashable was the only person who said, no, you have to pay me, which is why Mashable was not in there. Um, but for the most part, it's just free publicity for other bloggers. But it's also, I don't, I don't want to say it's free publicity. It's, it is, but some bloggers are already known, and other bloggers are so much. And then people can learn from different flavors. Everybody has a different flavor. Even you know, even if you and I had the same topic, we both write, but you have Miss style and I have Marcy style. So I want people to see that there is that you can blog and you don't have to just stick with one type of post and you can just do you as you blog. So that is it took about well, six actually it took six months to finish the book. But I probably edit that sucker to ad nauseum. That was it. It was bad. <laughs> Nobody well, edited it. I saw one of your early drafts, and I know I made some some suggestions here and there. Uh, I don't, geez, I don't even know if I still have that one. I probably do somewhere because I tend to forget to kill a lot of stuff on my computer, which after fifteen. But did I, uh, say what? But last. Last month I had sent the the um the final draft the final version before editing. Yeah. Did you get that copy? Uh, uh the final draft before editing. I sent something last month. I got yeah I got you sent me the PDF of the book. Okay yeah. Yeah you sent me a PDF of the book but I'm talking about way back when when you had first put it out there because I wrote as a matter of fact like I said earlier I wrote a I wrote a review about it back in 2012. So that's when I know that I, I'd seen the other part of it. Okay. So it doesn't it look nice though? The it designer did a Oh my job. goodness. I mean, you know, when I saw the rough draft, I said, okay, I wonder how this is going to go. And then when I saw what you sent later on, I said, wow, that's really fantastic stuff. Yeah, so that was the story behind the book. And right now, actually, I have an e-course that I'm going, that I'm working on. I'm trying to decide if I should have it paced or self-paced. And I'll probably do both. And the goal of the e-course is, is to help people. Okay, so I'm trying to create this bloggers block system, the, over, uh, the overcoming bloggers block system, and address common um, ailments that bloggers experience. So you, we know it's content. So this book will help with content, consistency part. Which that's more of a personal, that's more of a personal challenge because if you're not willing, you have to put that in, determine when you're going to post. But then I know I can create an editorial calendar to try to help people out. So I'm trying to figure that part out. Like since you can go online and find an editorial calendar, but how can I help individuals as opposed to a group? Um, where content, well, it's content consistency. And you get that also in this book because it shows some ways you can create your blog post. And even with our Google Hangout, this is another way to get your message out. But a lot of people, I don't know if a lot of people have embraced tech, 
you know, videos yet. I know if I'm not interviewing, I'm not doing video. I don't want to talk to myself. And I think that's another reason why I haven't started yeah. a podcast. You gotta I get to know. That. Uh, I mean, that's that's one of the things. For instance, uh, uh, I interviewed a friend of mine, Holly. Higgin, Higgin, you know, I don't know how to say her last name. I just, I just boxed it up again. Uh, Holly, if you watch this, I'm sorry I boxed up your name again. <laughs> anyway, when I got her to do the interview, she really wasn't used to being on video at the time. And she was freaked out about it. And I told her the truth. As a matter of fact, I said this when I did the seminar in 2011. You look exactly like you do in person on video. And all you have to do is get used to talking to a camera. If you can't talk to a camera, it's just you in the room, then how do you expect to be able to go out and talk to everyone else? And from that point, she's done a few more things with, with video. But you're right. Uh, there's a lot of folks who really still haven't gotten into it yet. And I'm trying. I mean, I've been putting out videos now for at least four years, and um, I'm still at a point where I have more videos than I have subscribers, but I'm working on that. And, you know, I, I try to do these types of things to not only highlight other people, uh, but I figure that other people, if they're pleased with their performance, they will help to promote their video and say, hey, look, this is me talking about the book or talking about the writing or talking about SEO or talking about you know whatever it is um, but it has to be reinforced you can't just have just one interview so that's why I take advantage of any interviews I get to do whether they're online or whether it's a podcast or whether it's on a blog and I try to keep promoting those things because this is other people who ask me questions it's not that I set it up and then I try to reinforce it with my own thing yeah, well, that's a challenge, but then also you went into the fact you ask people questions. I mean, ask them to promote it, and that's another hard part for anybody, even though I mean, I don't have a problem with it because I love social media, and then I love I can actually promote other people better than I can promote myself. But when uh, even the people that you interview, a lot of them are not, some of them are. Still, a lot of people still have aversion to social media, even after it's been out there a lot of, for a long time. And then you also have people who, we, if you're not a marketer, it's it's hard. It's I won't say it's a hard learn, but something you have to learn, and have to, and it's something you have to want to learn. Because I know so many great writers, and I, I said, and the one person just swore off. She said, oh, "I got these followers, or I got." these views and I don't even and I'm not even on social media well I understand your point of view but I also know if you're on social media you have a more people that will take notice even if you know I mean, on social media you never know who's watching and you know you we still have to market ourselves we have to market our blogs we have to market ourselves as writers we have to market ourselves online offline and even still that I mean that's a challenge because as much as I talk, I like to promote other people. When it comes to my stuff, I really don't do it the way I need to. But now that I have a book, oh, I'm ace right now. Like, dude, here's a book. <laughs> learn a blog. You don't want to learn how to blog. Buy a book. Mm -hmm. And then another thing. You laid it out really nicely, is, by the way. Huh? I just want to say you laid it out really nicely. I think it's it's visually a nice book. It's not a hard book to read, folks. It's it's it's, it's what? It's about 140 pages, but it's really easy to read. There's a lot of images in it. It's it's very colorful. Uh, I don't like green, but that's me. <laughs> but it, but it looks it looks good in this book. That's that's strange. But you cover a whole lot of things. You cover how people can have different media. Like on mine, you highlighted the audio thing that I have, and you've highlighted people who do video. You've highlighted people who talk about how-to videos, uh, people who talk about you know their different niches. And you even touched upon the, the thing about controversy and rants and how people have blogs like that and can be successful. And like you said, you also talked about the pros of doing it and the other considerations of doing it. So you really laid this out nicely. Um, but how did you decide 62? That's what I found during my research. There could have been more, there could have been less, but one of the goals was to, it would, and that might be extreme in my thinking, 
if I can put as much up front as possible, I won't have to go back and do the work. And then, like, I told the young lady, put 50 out there, and then I went to Darren Rouse, who owns Pro Blogger. Actually, he has a, a book, 31 Days to a Better Blog, or yeah. I think. And I have that book, so I want to see what he put in there. And then I have Blogging for Dummies to look and to see what type of blog posts they had listed. So after I put them all together and I saw that there were differences, I just said, okay, let me just put these together. And if they, I mean, if they had to be, if they had to be less, I would have put less in, but because that's what those are ones that kept coming up, so I decided to include them in the book. So it's just random pickings. It's not there was no rhyme or reason. Yeah, what's but, funny you know, to me, gave me fifty to start with. Yeah, so no, what's funny to me is that the blog that you got from me, which is my business blog, I said, how did you even know about the business blog? I just knew when you said I was going to be in the book, it was going to be I'm just sharing, and instead it was the business blog. I said, well, that was weird. <laughs> I was looking for the people that I knew too. I mean, well, there are only a few. Honestly, the people in the book, I don't know all those people. Um, I don't. But there, it got down to the last few where I was looking for visual. Now, one thing that I wanted to do that was different with my blog is to actually, is, let me stop saying actually, is to provide visual samples. People, I could tell you how to do anything, but if you can see it, you're more likely to do it. Right. That was one of the things that that made it take a lot longer because the book was actually the book was really done probably within four months and then I kept looking at it like and editing and when I said when I saw the the visual part I said okay it would make sense if I can have examples and then I like I said I was going to try to write those but it wouldn't have I could have done it and it would have been well but it would have is better using samples from other people's blogs. And that was, I think that's the main thing that set my blog apart from everybody else's. I've read tons of business blogs, but you're not going to get visual samples. Mm -hmm. Not for each and every blog post. So, I'm excited. No, it looks, it looks good. So, how have the marketing efforts, I mean, what marketing efforts have you taken so far other than contacting, you know, a bunch of us? You know, I, I gave that to you all because you're in the book. So I don't want people saying, hey, you were in the book and you didn't understand. And then a lot of people probably thought I was, I had not done it because they had not heard from me. So I did that. I have been reaching out to people on LinkedIn, the marketing people. My three target audiences audience for the book. Our bloggers, students, junior high through um, university level, if they're willing to buy it. But you know, really, junior high and high school. And if I can get into universities as a supplement, that would be so cool. And then the third, or the third audience is business bloggers. So I'm about to just start reaching out to say, hey, hey, who runs this blog? And I know Sprint has a blog. Hey, don't you need this blog for your your camp? And I know. I have Southwest, a marketing person from Southwest. I'm reaching out, her, reaching out to her before the end of this weekend to say, you know, I have this book. Would you consider it? Because what I do, when I reach out to people, I say, would you consider buying a book to review it for your team? Instead of just saying, hey, could you buy 10 books? Just buy one, and if you like it, you can buy some more. <laughs> that way I'm not giving books away for free, but then you might find that it is actually valuable and you want to, you know, you want more books. Mm -hmm. So that's. Um, also, do you know? I, I I don't know if you know Beverly Mahone. Um, she's on. I on do. But okay, last year was it? Last year, 2013. You know what? The years start to blend as you get older. Anyway, I I'm thinking it was 2013, maybe. She had a conversation going on with Kathy Ireland. You know who Kathy Ireland is? Um, maybe you don't. Yeah, the know. model. Well, she was a model, but now she's into fashion and all these other kind of things. She's almost a billionaire. If she's not a billionaire now, she's done really well in business. And anyway, she reached out. She and Beverly were having this conversation. And by the way, I like to brag to my guy friends that Kathy Ireland followed me first on Twitter. So there you go. I did not follow her first. Uh, so we're connected. You know. <laughs> but anyway, um, they were having a conversation. And next thing you know, Kathy Ireland bought... I think 20 books of Beverly's. 
uh, just from this conversation yeah. that we were talking about about um, uh, marketing and PR and whatever. And yours truly wrote the forward in that book. So there you go. I'm just Please. I'm just saying that's a way to get get going. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but everything you do is about you. And then uh, one thing that people always say about marketing, you need to market the book before it's actually done. So, so I had people on Twitter and um, LinkedIn saying, "Hey, what, when is the book? And that when is the book coming out?" And then I'll say, "Oh, it's coming! It's coming!" I could just say, "It's ready to buy." So that's that, I mean that's exciting. But I mean I had some challenges too because I didn't have a lot of money when I did this, and I had the designer. You know that she was. I'm surprised she didn't fire me. <laughs> I mean I wasn't the worst client. But I'm I'm sure I wasn't the best one either. But she did an excellent job. It was done, and then I'm doing it through Create Space because I can do it, you know, by books in small bulk. Because I don't need inventory in my house. So what I what I am going to do is um, initially be the the middle person. So have them to pay through um, PayPal, and then I ship the books out. So that way I can have an idea of who's buying my book. Did you buy so your own uh, publisher numbers? I'm sorry. Did you buy your own publisher numbers? There's, oh, you're there's talking about the ISBN number? Yes. I did. And you can buy, well, I don't know, well, at that time, you could buy one for $125 or 10 for like $250. So, I, bought, yeah, I bought 10. I think it cost me $25. <laughs> 10 of them? Yeah, I got 10. But I bought them back, I mean, to be fair, I did buy them in either 2002 or 2003. Um, and it's around the house. It's in this room somewhere. That's a shame. I don't know where it is. They sent me the whole thing, and I just don't know where I put them. And people have asked me, how come you never put your first book on Amazon? And of course, one of the reasons was that I didn't think that it would do so well on Amazon. It's a book on leadership, and it's a plain cover, and it, you know, it's it, if if you're looking for visual appeal, I didn't think that was going to get it. But number two is I can't find my publisher numbers, and I didn't put the publisher number in the book when I had it printed. And you're talking inventory. I, you're right. I still got. I I did sell enough books to make my money back, but I still got two boxes, two cases of books. And I'm not putting my cases of books in the basement, so they're in my closet in the master bedroom because I got to make sure they stay good. You know, I still want to take those things with me and sell those things someday. Well, you can do that though, even with the the not so pleasant cover. When you go, if you do any leadership, because leadership never goes. That's not a topic that will ever die. It might change. You know, it might add. A, become more modern with new tools, but leadership is the topic that will never die. So you could just do workshops and then tell them, I've been listening to speakers, because so one of my goals is to get paid as a speaker. Um, say, yeah, hey, you buy the you know, buy my books and then I can come in for you for you know for free, even though you already paid through the books. You know what I mean? So if you buy twenty, you know, twenty five of my for twenty five dollars and I can come in and give you a one-hour workshop or whatever, or come speak to you for an hour, and you've already been paid, and the books are gone. <laughs> ooh, now I have taken my books on speaking engagements, but that's ooh, that's sneaky. That's sneaky, but I like it. Was, um, well, I did that with. Um, I saw that once. I've I've been listening to speakers, but there was this guy. Are you familiar with Chris Brogan? Oh, but or, yeah. Yeah, oh, he's in the book, and I remember when he wrote the book, his Google Plus book. He told, he put out there, if you buy, I think a hundred books. I don't know if it was a hundred books or, I think it was a hundred books at thirty, thirty dollars a piece, and you can show me the receipt. I'll come for free. But you also had to pay his expenses, and everything. But the, I mean, books are sold. He's there. Everything is covered, so it's a win-win for him. Yeah, he's already got. I mean, he's saying for free, but he already got the money. Right. So he said, "You buy a hundred books, I'm there." But you, he, what he said, you always also have to cover transportation and hotel. What well, he's paid, he, books are covered. Cool. So now, think about think about that. 
Yeah, well, yeah, I really need to push the speaking thing more. I haven't done it all that much over the last five years, you know, but I need to do a lot more. When you're speaking in your own hometown, that's not really speaking as, as much. Uh, and, of course, they don't want to pay you in your own hometown because you're there. <laughs> but you, you have spoken yeah. in some interesting places. I mean, you know, like I said, I like to look up, find out what people are doing. And so you spoke at the New Media Expo in Las Vegas. You've spoken in Chicago, which is where you're from. You spoke at the Blogging While, Br While Brown conference in Los Angeles. I mean, I've actually never been to one of those. I thought about going last year when it was in Philly, but I was consulting out of town, so I couldn't. The timing just wasn't going to get there. Um, so what's it like okay. speaking at a blogging conference? It's, it's interesting because, well, my very first conference was Blogging While Brown, and I was speaking on live blogging, and I probably had what good, 20 people? Only because I was at going at the same time as Pam Perry. Dude, that was such, that was, you know how you were in your, your small room? Yeah. That's the same thing. I was on, the, you know, the same time as Pam Perry. So <laughs> people are not coming to live blogging when you have Pam Perry. But it, it turned out well, and it gave me the confidence to keep applying for different conferences. I actually applied for two that are here in Chicago. One is about, I don't know, I think it was food and writing, and another one was for nonprofits. Now, I am really, and both of them are in June. One is at the, in the early part of June, and the other one is at the end of June. And Blogging While Brown is in June, the third weekend in June in Texas. So I'm really trying to work all of that in because I, I want to go to Texas. And Blogging While Brown is a great opportunity to be there. But at New Media Expo, as far as the experiences, Blogging while Brown was cool because that was my first one. Nobody knew who I was, but I met a lot of people. And then New Media Expo, it was just huge. It's it, you know it's in Vegas, and it was fun. Um, I met people. Most of the people I met on uh, at New Media Expo, I met them through Twitter, and then we connected there. Um, that and that was fun. And I think. It was different because I actually went to New Media Expo when it was Blog World. In 20, no, that was my actual first conference. And it was different because there were more white males. You know, then you saw more white males and not a lot of black people. I look at that in general because I'm usually the only black person or one of the few black people everywhere I go. You see and the I hands think up, only yeah. one. <laughs> So. So you understand. I mean, uh -oh. it's not that it's a bad thing, but it's just where is everybody else? Do you not know about it, or are you not willing to pay, or are you not interested? You know what I mean? Because finances are a challenge, especially if look, especially if you live on the south side of Chicago, you're not making the north side money. But um, I, I look at that, and it was intimidating. Honestly, when I went to blogging while blog world in 2010, it was intimidating because there weren't that many people, and people were not that friendly. And then I went to Blogging While Brown and I was a speaker, but then you have that commonality because you are black and you have do you have different topics and different things to talk about. Whereas you go to blogging conference, you can always talk about blogging, but nobody's really interested in you as a person, but that's different. That was different at Blogging While Brown. And then I went I spoke at um social media so Social Media Week Chicago a couple of times, which is cool, because the first time we went, Pax House, we had probably two, 200 people, and we were at the Sears Tower, or it's now Willis Tower, but we were on the, the top floor. Nice. That's when I thought I had made it. We didn't get paid, but we made it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then last year, New Media Expo, that was good, but the only bad thing was I, I did okay, but I know where, where my weaknesses is are now, so I'll do it differently. Because if I have a lectern in front of me, I will stand there and hold it and not move because you have that crutch. And you. So next time I'm just going to work the room, I'm going to be like, I don't know who works the room, but that's what I'm going to be like at the next the next time I speak. So mm -hmm. it was a great experience. And then the free food is good too because you get access when you speak, you get access to everything. The free parties, lunch, and anything else that they have, and then people actually want to talk to you because even if they don't know you, but because you're a speaker, you're somebody at the conference. So that that was cool too. 
and it was in Vegas. That was amazing. <laughs> and when I got back, it was a snowstorm. But I missed most of the snowstorm because I was in Vegas. Oh, goodness. So. The first time I went to Vegas, uh, I, I'm in Syracuse. It was 15 degrees outside and a blizzard. And I told my friend I had a, had a parka on. I gave him the parka and said, I'm not going to need this. I'm going to Vegas. I got to Vegas. It's 70 oh, yeah. degrees. It was nice and warm and sunny. And I said, oh, geez, I can't believe what I just left. And then that night it got down to 30, and I had no coats, and I had no sweaters, and I had nothing long sleeve, and I got sick after wow. two days. Because, well, this was back before we had Internet or anything, so I didn't know that it got cold in the desert at night. <laughs> So that was a lesson to learn. But, but you know, yeah. you're, you're kind of right about when you write on the conference thing. I haven't been to a blogger conference, but I've been to other conferences. And the truth of the matter is that most people want to gravitate towards someone who's either kind of known um, outside of the conference area or where all like the cool people seem to be. And so, you know, it, it's the same with a lot of these other things that you go to. Um, you know, you go to a blogging conference, well, who does everyone want to talk to? Well, if Darren Rouse is there, they don't want to talk to you. If Chris Brogan is there, they don't want to talk to you. Um, well, uh, I spoke to Chris Brogan at New Media Expo last year, and well, he was really cool. And oh, he yeah. took the time, Chris, um, he took the time to talk to me and these two other young, two other young guys who were asking him questions. And that's, that was one of those things where I it was good to see that even though he attained uh, attained a level of success, because I know he's still doing his thing out offline, that he still took time with people. Because um, Grandma Girl was there. I don't know her name, but she was there. Um, Kiko Lani, Christy Hines was there. And I know Jeff Bullis was there, but I did not get a chance to speak to him because I really I didn't know it was him until after the conference. <laughs> I was looking at him again. This guy looks familiar, and I wouldn't go, run up to him and say, "Dude, are you Jeff Bullis?" But I'm almost certain that was Jeff. So I mean, you, you see the people that you you follow, and it's so cool that, and it's really really nice when they are down to earth people, because what's his name? Um, Pat Flynn had a uh, um, session there, Full House. His his his. I mean, I had to stand up like I got there late, but. His session was full just because Pat has been around like literally years. I don't know how many years, but he has his online, then he has his um, podcast. So he has two audiences. So if a person never went to his blog, he still has the podcast. And that goes into, an, I'm about to go into another topic here. That's something that bloggers need to think about. or even, I won't say bloggers, content creators need to think about to have more than one new. Because in my book, Chris um, Chris Brogan did a screencast uh, about Google Plus. So he wrote the book, did a screencast, and posted it on his blog. That's three different markets right there. Actually, he did something else and made it for oh four. Wait, the screencast, his blog, he wrote the book. It, there was something else that he did, but he reached three different audiences just from doing those three things. But they were all interrelated. So if people sometimes people think they have to do certain things because it's too hard, try try to do be make the biggest impact with with as little work as possible. Because even with the screencast, you have I I don't know which program he used, but that's an audience right there. Oh, he posted it on Google. That's another audience. So that's four different audiences right there. Somebody might happen upon his book. We may read the book, but even if they don't read the book, they have the screencast, which is posted on YouTube, and you can easily find somebody by that. If you Google them, they're going to find them on YouTube because they own Google and YouTube. Then you have his site. So he has, that's genius when you think about it. But who's going to take the time to do the podcast, post it on YouTube, and then post it on blog? You know, but it might take a few, a couple extra hours. Some of us might. Saying. But I'm going to point out a couple of little things here. We're getting close to the end. But I'm going to point out a couple okay. of things. One, you mentioned Pat Flynn. I never heard of Pat Flynn until last year from Brian Hawkins. I had no clue. I'd never heard the name. Now, saying that because it points out something that Chris Brogan said 
um, a couple of years ago. It was very interesting. He said, you know, a lot of people know me online and they think I'm this really big, famous guy. But I walk out of my house, I walk down the street to get a cup of coffee. Nobody stops me on the street. No one knows who I am. I go get my cup of coffee. None of these people know who I am other than this guy who lives in this house who does something. And he said, that's the thing about, about fame is that, you know, you have this one audience that just thinks, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. And you have this other audience who has no clue who you are. I think about that with a lot of today's movie stars and music people. I don't know who any of them are. I, you know, the Grammys, I stopped watching it because I don't know who almost anybody is. What this basically says is this is the reason you have to kind of do your promotions because sometimes when you make this assumption, and I'm as bad as anyone else, like I said, I'm about to hit 10 years on my business blog. I just hit seven years and I'm just sharing, and I make this assumption that because I have almost 4,000 posts, blog posts online on my blogs and other people's blogs that people know who I am, and they don't. And so I have to, you know, step up promoting. And this is what you have to do kind of with your book is to step up the promoting. And we don't want to overdo it. You know, we don't want to have a post every single minute on Twitter saying, buy my book. Hey, here's my book. Did you hear about my book? Did you see my book? You know, you know who's in the book? You don't want to have that. But you do have to somewhat kick things up. And this is where we go back to what we talked about early in this video is about promoting and how you get out there to promote and how you try to, you know, make sure that, you know, you're reaching the audience and how sometimes you have to keep going at it, you know, um, which is something I know I don't do enough of and I really need to kick it up because, you know what, I, I, I need to live an easier life. <laughs> right. I mean, your, I, your, you you get to the point where your work works for you and you're not working for it. Oh, yeah, my goodness. I mean, I, I work from project to project and I have significant mm -hmm. downtime. It's just like, you know what, Mitchell, you've got to have a smarter business model. And this is part of it. I got to get better known so that I have people who are reaching out to me to come speak to them and reaching out to me to help them with different things rather than me having to do all that pitch. I've been out here long enough. So, you know, and that's the same with you. And that's why I think that this, is, this book is a great book. I mean, I put it out there again, folks. You know what? And I'm not an affiliate. I'm not an affiliate. Okay, I'm in the book, but just briefly, you know. <laughs> I mean, you know, one one little thing, and then I'm gone. So, but I think that this is a, a quality book. You've done a nice job putting this thing together. I applaud Thank you for that. It's, it's wonderful. So, here we are. We're the final thing here. This is your moment. Pitch you. Pitch the book. Tell people where they can find you. And later on, we will put links down below so that folks can find you wherever you want to be found unless you don't tell me. Because sometimes I do these interviews and I say to people all the time, give me your links and then they never come back. So let's see if you do. Go for it. This is you. All right. Okay, so here's my book, 62 Blog Posts to Overcome Bloggers Block. It, you can find it, well, right now I have a launch special on overcomingbloggersblog.com on the homepage. You can get it for this month. It's a Black History Month special for $29.99, but the regular price is $49.99. And um, you can get it there, but there are also electronic versions. I'm proud to say that it's, there, it's on Kindle, Smashwords, and Nook. So you can get um, overcome, how to overcome block, 62 blog posts to overcome blog block on all, all of those sites for $9.99. You can catch me online at um, Twitter, Marcy, Marcy underscore Hill. You probably won't find me on Facebook unless I'm bored. Um, let me see. You know, on Twitter, you can catch me on LinkedIn, Marcy Hill. I think I don't know if it's Marcy underscore Hill or Marcy Hill, but you can find me. It's just Marcy Hill. And it's just Marcy Hill. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, okay, Marcy, Facebook, Twitter. I'm on Google Plus, but I'm not active. But if you, you know, if you want to connect, I will connect with you. What's the add you add me to your circles? I'll add you back. Um, and you can find if you want to hire me for trainings, blog trainings, writing trainings, social media trainings, you can find me at Marcy Writes, and that's M-A-R-C-I-E-W-R-I-T-E-S. And if you like roller skating, leave a story on my blog. I don't have a, like, it's not set up the way I want it to, to be set up, but just go to the about page and I will respond. And that's at realskatestories.com. That's R-E-A-L. S K A T E 
S T O R I E I I E S dot com, Real Skate Stories. And if you're in Chicago and you have anything you want to post about what's happening on the South Side, or if you just want to read about what's going on in the South Side, it's GoShorty.net. G O S H O R T Y dot net. And everything about my book is on OvercomingBloggersBlock.com. That's a long title, but just look up Marcy Hill. If you, I mean, if that's just too much. And I believe that's um that's it. Writing, blogging, social media. I think that's all I have for now. Oh, and I do have another book called How to Write a Powerful Professional Bio, which is available on Smashwords and Barnes and Noble. It should be on um, Kindle by the end of the week. I forgot. That was an oversight. I thought um, Smashwords was going to do it. They didn't. But if you need help writing a bio, and this is small, easy read. It's two ninety nine dollars on Smashwords and Nook. And I, that's it for now. But keep an eye out for more books. I have two more. I have a workbook coming up for Overcoming Bloggers Block. It's, got, it's a companion guide, and it'll get you to um, to think about ideas for your blogs. And I also have two more supplemental guides coming out soon. So look out for that within the next four to six months. And wow. that's, I think that's all I have for now, Mitch. Was that, was that okay? Was that okay? That's wonderful stuff. There you go. So we're going to close it now. Um, Marcy, thank you so much for doing this. I hope that you're pleased with it when you go back to watch it later on. Because she will watch it later on. And I will. You know what? Uh, we put it out there. As a matter of fact, I'll share the video a couple of times myself on, on uh, LinkedIn. No, I'm not going to try on LinkedIn. Uh, Twitter. <laughs> I'll post it on Marcy White. Oh, I'll post it on all of my sites. Yeah. I have three. So I'll post them on all three. Yeah. And then maybe later on you can tell me how stupid I am starting a fifth blog. But I have a I have a reason for it. So there you go. Actually that's not stupid. Nothing is ever stupid if you have a passion for it. It doesn't have to make sense to other people. You just have to believe in what you what you're doing. Thank you. I like that. And we're gonna close on that note. So I'm Mitch Mitchell. Y'all take care. Hope you enjoyed this interview. Thank you so much, Marcy. Wave goodbye. Thanks, Mitch. Bye. Yeah.